The Immigration Minister believes a suite of visa changes for overseas workers will help stamp out exploitation. The government revealed today that six temporary work visas are being replaced with one new visa. Employers will all have to register to recruit overseas workers to ensure they meet minimum standards. And labour hire companies will face even more scrutiny. Immigration Minister Ian Lees Galloway told me poor treatment of migrant workers remains a big problem. We certainly have seen issues in construction. Uh, we've seen issues in, uh, in horticulture as well. We've seen uh, issues in farming, in forestry and, and fishing uh, are all uh, areas where there, there are concerns. Uh, and you know, we're, what we're really looking to do is to work alongside sectors and support the good employers who do want to engage with government, who want to have a, an active relationship with government on, on workforce planning and stamping out migrant exploitation. And I think that's why you've seen so many positive responses uh, from industry leaders today, because they know there's an opportunity here for them to get the certainty they want about getting the workforce that they need. Um, whilst also working alongside government to make sure that we see improvements in conditions, improvements in pay, more opportunities for people to train uh, and a real focus on, on weeding out those exploitative employers and supporting the people who want to do it right. OK, so you are ditching some of the labour test, the labour market test requirements for the regions. So for what particular jobs and where? Yes, yeah, so outside of the main centres, so we've said the main centres are Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin. So outside of those main centres, uh, if an employer is offering a job that pays more than the median wage, which is currently $25 an hour, they will not have to go through a labour market test. They will be able to um, go uh, straight uh, to if they're an accredited employer, uh, they will be able to go and find the person that they need, and that person can apply for their visa. Um, if people are if people are paying below twenty five dollars an hour, they will still have to go through a labour market test. That labour market test will be strengthened on what it is currently, but it will also be more how effective. how are you going to strengthen that? Yeah, so um, one of the main areas is uh, if. Uh, a, um, if someone who is a client of the Ministry of Social Development is referred to an employer uh, and, uh, and that person meets the criteria that that employer has put in place, there will be uh, much fewer opportunities for employers to turn down uh, those local workers. And if, they, and if they do turn down those local workers without meeting uh, one of the few reasons uh, that, that are acceptable now, um, then they will not be able to get access to the uh, the migrant worker that they want. And also if they do... OK, sorry, Minister, down, to interrupt. So, so just to be clear, yep. they will have to take MSD referrals first unless they can give a good reason not to take them, correct? That's what you're that, saying? That, that's absolutely right. That's okay. absolutely right. And, and this will so what's a proper reason? On. What's a proper reason? You say there are a few reasons that they will be able yep. to decline people. What, will, what are those reasons? Yep. Uh, 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 one reason would be failing a drug test if it's if it's a high risk uh, job. That would be um, a, a valid reason for for turning someone down. Um, but there will be other um, specific reasons. But um, this will place a lot more onus on MSD to be referring people who are ready for those jobs, who, who are appropriate to fill those jobs. At the moment, MSD makes around 25,000 referrals a year, but from those 25,000, only 900 people are placed into jobs. We need to get more of our own people who are looking for work placed into work, but we also need to make sure that the referrals that MSD is making uh, are appropriate referrals and that they're referring people who are work-ready and have the skills and experience to take up the job. OK, so, yeah. so why so bad? Well, I, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to put a, a, your finger on it, but I'd say it's a combination of uh, MSD having incentives to refer people uh, rather than um, incentives to place people into sustainable work. Uh, and I know that the Minister of Social Development, Carmel Cipollone, is, is, is working hard on, on improving that process. Um, but I also think that there are there will be examples where employers are, are turning people down um, on reasons that, that probably aren't solid enough from our perspective and then, and then expecting the immigration system to, to fill that role instead. Will these changes mean more migrant workers? 
Look, we're not focused on numbers. Uh, but we, I would like to, I, I'm interested yeah. to know. So will these changes, yeah. will these visa changes mean we have more um, overseas workers working in New Zealand? What's the modelling telling you? The, so we, we anticipate that if it has any effect, it, it has the potential to reduce the number of essential skills visas which are issued. But I, I guess at a time when we have very low unemployment, we have a very strong economy, what we're really looking for is that a greater proportion of the overall workforce comes from within New Zealand. But you're saying these changes will likely cut the number of offshore workers? Look, potentially, but, but not by, by how much? numbers. Uh, look, it, as I say, we're not fixated on, on numbers. Uh, this isn't, but I'm this, curious. These changes, are, these changes are, I'm sure you are, but these changes are not designed uh, to uh, increase or decrease the number of migrants that, that come to New Zealand. They are designed to get better outcomes for everybody working in New Zealand. They're designed to help us stamp out exploitation. They're designed to create incentives for employers to improve uh, conditions, uh, uh, to improve so wages, to create opportunities for New Zealanders to, to work here. Overall, what they're designed to do is to support the government's ambition for a more productive, more sustainable and more inclusive economy. So if these are neutral changes in terms of numbers, then it's not going to do anything for the meat industry that says they're 2,000 workers short then, is it? Or for all those other businesses that they say are hundreds short? So um, the meat industry is coming out today saying you know, that they are really enthusiastic about these changes because we want to um, enter into a sector agreement with them. Now, we want, this is one of the really novel parts of these changes is, is the idea of, a, of, a, of an agreement between government and industry about what their workforce needs are going to look like into the future, what we need to do right now, and what we want to achieve over time. Now, for the meat industry, it's quite possible in the short term um, to fill those uh, skill shortages in, in the regions where they operate, that there, there is going to be a continued reliance on uh, the migrant workforce and possibly even uh, that in the short term their migrant workforce will grow. But the point of the sector agreement... So are they going to get the, all the numbers that they need, though? Because the bottom line is that's what they're particularly interested in. They've put out a statement today saying they're 2,000 workers short. Will these changes mean they get those workers from overseas? So as we go into into the future, what we want to do is work with the uh, meat industry and others that we want to form sector agreements with about how we can ensure that the proportion of their workforce that comes from within New Zealand continues to grow. So in the short term, yes, uh, it, you know, the whole point of this exercise is to make sure that they get the workforce that they need. Uh, and that is going to come from both the migrant workforce and from within New Zealand. In the short term, likely that that will have a greater emphasis on the migrant workforce, but in the long term, we want to know that by working alongside government, uh, those industries are doing more to create opportunities for New Zealanders too. And that was the Immigration Minister, Ian Lees-Galloway.